All right, all right, all right. We are back. We are better than ever. And we are in Lighthouse Point. And uh, welcome. Today's video is going to be all about uh, a tour through Lighthouse Point so I can showcase some of the most immersive content that you are going to find out there, which will showcase what living in South Florida is all about. Now, if you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Chris Igo. I'm a full-time full-service realtor with an all-star team that services all of South Florida. And I make this content to showcase, obviously, exactly what it's like to live here. Um, but help you make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, and for your financial bottom line. Now, Lighthouse Point is um, is sick. I mean, this is a coastal community that has some of the most exclusive real estate that you will ever find uh, anywhere. And uh, today we're going to showcase exactly what that looks like. Now, there are sections of Lighthouse Point that are older, and you are going to find... Um, smaller, older homes that exist, but you're also going to find um, spectacular homes that have intercoastal access, which will take you directly to the uh, ocean. We are very close to the Hillsborough Inlet, and so um, those homes are going to be a premium. They are very scarce. There are not many homes that... Uh, okay, I'm just going to <laughs> show you exactly what that looks like. So, hopefully that is recording, because I have another view here too, which uh, I suspect you will enjoy. But these homes that are to the left or right of me are essentially, uh, there are canals on either side, which will take you out to the, um, to the intercoastal and then out to the ocean. And as you can see, these homes are spectacular. Now, there was a time where like this home here, and I'll, okay. So that home is uh, not all that impressive. That is an older home. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's, uh, it's great, but there are older homes, excuse me, older homes like that, that exist and um, and if a developer can go in there and buy that home at the right price and then build one of these monstrosities, they are going to do that. And there are lots of people, not just investors, there are lots of people that um, are cash rich right now and um, are doing exactly that. So it's not uncommon in Lighthouse Point to see. So like this home in front of us, older, looks like the roof is shot right next to a, uh, an incredible home that is a, a heck of a lot newer. And, and you're gonna find those opportunities to live the coastal lifestyle right here. And these are deep water canals with no fixed bridges. So you're gonna be able to go out there and um, if you have the means, build your dream home and uh, live that uh, intercoastal, coastal uh, lifestyle and, um, and max out South Florida living to the fullest. Now, that's gonna cost, like you can see, there's a sailboat in the uh, back of that house, which, um, how cool is that, right? Um, and there's lots of different opportunities. Um, when I say there are lots of different opportunities, that's not true. There are a scarce amount of opportunities that exist that have um, this type of water access. And those homes, those lots, um, are going. you're gonna pay a, a premium for it. Now, after this tour, we're gonna go out to uh, Deerfield Beach, showcase that a little bit, but also, uh, head into um, Boca Raton and showcase a little bit of that too. And I don't know if I'll truncate these uh, videos because they will be lengthy. Uh, earlier this morning, I went and did this in uh, in Pompano Beach as well as uh, in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, I had a heck of a fun time because that's where I grew up. That's my uh, old stomping grounds. So I enjoyed that immensely. Um, but the homes that exist in here are spectacular. I'm going to turn that off to conserve some energy, but literally any home or any street that I turn down to the left is going to be um, really expensive, really nice, and afford you the ability to go out there and live um, a coastal or a water, uh, a nautical lifestyle because you can have your boat in your backyard. So a lot of people who uh, live here opt exactly to do that. 
All right. So the home that we are going to see that is on the inlet is a $16 million home for sale. And, um, and you got a let's go Brandon sign over there. So I wonder what their uh, political affiliation is. Oh man, I gotta get this. So this is incredible. I mean, these boats, these homes, this access, this lifestyle is uh, it's fantastic. And you'll see most of these homes are, uh, are new. And, um, and they're modern, they're luxurious, they're big, they're open, they're bright. Um, and they, you know, they're going to be on those deep water canals that gives you the access with no fixed bridges, which is going to give you the ability. Oh, 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 oh I know that house. Uh, shout out to Jeff Rubin, who will probably never watch this video, but uh, he used to live there. And the parties he would throw are legendary. Um, thankfully, that was uh, pre- uh, <laughs> iPhone era where uh, content be could be recorded and you could be blackmailed forever. Not that that would apply to me at all, but nonetheless. Um, one of the downsides of living here, or one of the cons, if you will, um, is that the... Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Is that the school system here is not great. So you're going to be zones for below average schools, Norcrest, Deerfield Beach Middle, and Deerfield, Be Deerfield Beach High School. Um, none of which I suspect the, uh, the children who uh, live in this community go to because they're subpar. And uh, the people who live here are affluent and have the money and the resources and uh, they're going to opt to go private. I would say nine times out of ten. But you are right here. Well, you're not on the um, ocean per se. You, uh, you're right on the intercoastal and you've got the opportunity to, uh, to live that coastal lifestyle. You're around the corner from Deerfield Beach um, and you're right around the corner uh, from really everything. So anything that you would want is, uh, is out here. So it is a... Uh, Plenty of shopping, plenty of parks, plenty of uh, recreational opportunities, um, and a lot of people want that. So let's go this way. You're going to let me go, pal. These roundabouts are always fun. And, um, and let's just showcase what that looks like and what these homes look like. They are incredible. But again, you, you will find um, some incredible homes, and then you're going to find some homes that, uh, you know, really uh, uh, are begging to um, be knocked down. And um, look at this. These homes are sick. All right. All right. So we are going to keep on trucking. A sale pending right here. That house uh, would not shock me if it was knocked down. This house over here is a prime example. Of course, it's not going to be a premium lot because it is not on the intercoastal. It doesn't have that water access. Um, but you're going to find some opportunities here. And there are, like this home over here, obviously older. Again, doesn't have that, uh, I don't believe it has that water access. But this is an incredible place to live if that's the lifestyle that you want. We're going to keep on trucking and then we're going to make our way into, uh, into Deerfield Beach and then to Boca Raton. You've got some apartments here on our left. So again, you're going to find different price, price points that exist. You're going to find some apartments. You're going to find some, some condos, um, but you're also going to find some ridiculous homes ridiculous I mean that in a good way that are right on the intercoastal deep water canals that allow you to uh, live the lifestyle that you want if this is in fact the lifestyle that you want Let me... all right let's these are like this one here is it, is it... you're on star no we don't want to hear on star show some of the older homes so you get some perspective 
uh, of the opportunities that that exist. Now, those older homes are great. There's nothing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with those homes. Um, however, look at this lot right here. Okay. Okay. What's going on there? Hmm. I wonder. Going to be developed? I believe so. Right here, another lot for sale. Right. So, lot for sale. And you know, some of these older homes are going to, um, could be in play, you know, the, those sellers could be older. They could want to, um, they might be thinking about selling and that's where the opportunities exist is, is if this is the lifestyle that you want and you are willing and you have the means to, uh, to build, um, then, you know, we can reach out to, there are lots of ways that we can reverse engineer how to unlock that inventory of people who are thinking about selling because right now everybody's thinking about selling. And a lot of those um, homeowners are older. So is now the time? Maybe. But this gives you a good idea and this will be a shorter video. Um, recording now let's turn that off of what exists out here and what the opportunities are so again this is a small um, city relative to some of the other cities that exist out here um, but really really nice very affluent um, and it's going to allow you to uh, live that coastal lifestyle in a big way um, now, there are some $16 million homes over here. There's uh, some $2 million homes over here. Some uh, $23 million homes over here. Um, this is, I mean, if you're living here and you want this lifestyle, you're balling out of control, which is great. Um, but these homes uh, in Boca are gonna be a lot more expensive. These homes in, um, in Delray Beach are likely going to be a lot more expensive. So there are, there's only so much land that exists that has this waterfront, deep waterfront access and no fixed bridges. When you start adding in fixed bridges and you start um, uh, talking about canals that don't have that deep water access, you're not gonna have the same, <coughs> it's not gonna have the same value. But look at these, Look at these homes, right? Incredible. Let's see. And again, newer, bigger, open, bright. You got an older home over here. You got a lot for sale over here. All of these uh, opportunities are in play because Everyone from around the country and around the world that wants to live this lifestyle, you know, there's it's a scarce amount of opportunity that actually provides it. So this is one of the areas that exists that does, and I just wanted to ensure that you got to see it. So this house here on, if I had to venture to guess, I'm saying it's somewhere between 16 and $17 million. Same with this one over here, maybe more. Um, but then next to it, you've got an older home. Still nice, but kind of pales in comparison. However, if that's the uh, if that's the home that you want and it's got the deep water access, and you know it could be perfect for you. I don't know. So uh, let's keep on trucking. And actually, I'm going to I'll cut this short because um, because I want to save battery. And I don't want to. <laughs> I want to be able to shoot the other communities too. Deerfield Beach is coming up next. It's very nice. Uh, and then we'll trend into Boca, which is super nice. Um, not that this isn't nice, but the, the areas that are around the homes and the opportunities as far as schools are concerned, it's, uh, you know, it's no comparison to Boca or actually Deer, Deerfield Beach is uh, a little bit iffy too, but, um, it's nothing like Boca. Boca, you're going to have the uh, the best schools and 
and it's a lot more expensive, a lot nicer. <clears throat> okay. And, and again, arguably, depending on what your vantage point is and, um, and what you want. So I'm not trying to poo poo a <laughs> lighthouse point by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but the, you know, it's just, a, it's a known fact that focus schools are better than, uh, Deerfield Beach schools, which is what lighthouse point is, uh, is zoned for. So I think I started this before and I never finished the uh, thought and it's because it's easy to get distracted when you're, um, <laughs> when you're touring communities. Uh, but I do want to say, uh, the, you know, inflation is through the roof, right? I started talking about this in the last video and, uh, we're at seven and a half percent. That's not the real number by any stretch of the imagination. It's higher than that. Lots of variables aren't accounted for. And so, okay. uh, I will cry if that didn't record. Oh uh, boy. I got to pull over and make sure that, uh, that video actually saved. Because if it didn't, oh, that's going to genuinely suck. But look at these homes. They are incredible. Again, they're right on the intercoast, or they're right off. This is the Kingfisher Waterway. They're right off of the um, intercoastal. And they've got that deep water access. So you've got the opportunity to, uh, to live that uh, lifestyle. But I'm going to check this out real quick, and uh, I, I shall return. All right, thank goodness. <laughs> I got freaked out there a little bit because I was afraid that uh, I didn't save it the right way. So we're still in Lighthouse Point. We're gonna head towards um, towards Deerfield Beach. And uh, I do wanna finish the thought because uh, this would now be the second video I didn't complete my thought as it relates to inflation. So inflation, seven and a half percent, not the real number, the real number's higher and um, and that's not a good thing, right? Cost of goods and services are higher than they've been in a really long time. It's the fastest growing infl inflation uh, that we've ever seen, uh, at least in my lifetime. Um, and with that, uh, you know, the, the government is trying to, the treasury is trying to curtail that by raising interest rates. And so we know that, um, that mortgage rates are upticking, right? So it was at one point we were close to 2% and now we're close to 4%, if not more than that. And we're certain, which again, historical context is lower than, you know, historically it's lower than lots of time. So it's still uh, cheap relative to historical perspective. Is it cheap relative to 2%? No. So that feels like it's a, um, there's a big impact there. And there is a big difference between two and 4%. Okay, um, but let's talk about what has happened over the, certainly since the pandemic, and then let's trace that back to the, um, the last um, event, which was the too big to fail era, right? And, um, and the, all the things that happened back then. So back when that happened and it was too big to fail and the mortgage and the market, the real estate market got decimated and we saw all those things. We don't see those dynamics in play right now. They're not the same um, factors in play. They're just not, you know, it's getting a loan back then was uh, if you've got a heartbeat, you've got a pulse and you're willing to, uh, you know, state that you uh, make X amount of dollars, they're gonna give you a mortgage and, you know, there was really no qualification process involved. That's not the way it is now. And it hasn't been since. With that, you know, the meltdown, the banking meltdown, the real estate meltdown, all the, the stock market meltdown, you know, Ford being a two, GE and Bank of America being a two, it's, you know, it was the, it was the end of the world. But it wasn't, right? And so what did they do? They, they propped up the economy. They, um, you know, did all kinds of things to stimulate the economy. And that was when they started to kick the can down the road. A lot of people have asked me, because I've talked about my stockbroker experience and what that was like as a stockbroker for 18 years, what was I saying back then? I was saying the exact same thing I'm saying right now, which is, that is not good. It is obviously not good for every action. There's an equal and opposite reaction. And if you do those types of things, at some point, there's gonna be inflation, and at some point, there's gonna be um, economic hell to pay. 
and that's where we're at today. But what else do we have? We have COVID and COVID came out and it shut down everything and the world stood still and stopped and the treasury went out there and printed money to the tunes of trillions of dollars and bought bonds and stimulated the economy in unprecedented ways. So you got those two events and where are we looking at now? We're looking at um, inflation that seems to be through the roof. It can go a lot higher, so let's talk about that. Um, now, they're, they're raising interest rates, great. That's what they're supposed to do, and I hope they do. And it, it's going to create short-term pain, period. I know that. However, what if the market and what if the, um, the values of real estate don't decrease? Because I don't expect that to happen, at least not here in South Florida, the way, um, because of the supply and demand issues, I don't think that we're going to be impacted as much as other places. Um, and for all the reasons I've talked about in other videos, the supply and demand thing is one thing, but in addition to that, well, not in addition, included in that is the fact that it is a, there's so much freedom that exists in South Florida or in Florida in general that doesn't exist in other places. And there are so many people from around the country and around the world that want to be here specifically for that. So that demand is not the local demand that, you know, the move up or the move down buyers or the snowbirds or any of those things. The buyer pool has increased exponentially um, over the last couple of years. And that's not slowing down at all. Like it just isn't. At some point, will it? I don't know, maybe, but in the near term, it's not. So. I expect that we'll continue to see appreciation in, in property values. I, I hope that rate slows down, but let's just let's just use what some of the analysts and experts are saying in terms of a macro number for the country over the next five years. They're talking about cumulatively 23% appreciation. It's either 23 or 26, but I'll meet in the middle. Let's say it's 25% appreciation over the next five years. That's appreciation, period. Okay. Now let's also talk about the inflation. The inflation, the cost of goods and services, is going to go higher, but interest rates are too. So what does that really mean? If interest rates keep going higher and home values continue to appreciate, although negligibly compared to the last two years, maybe, maybe it's more, I don't know. I would argue we're at the start of the bubble, not at the end of a bubble, but that, that remains to be seen. Nonetheless, if you're out there today and you've got the ability to buy and lend or get financing at 4% at, I'm making up a number here, but let's just a million dollars, okay. And then, or use any number you want, it's the same concept. And then the over the next few years, real estate values continue to appreciate, even at a smaller rate, but you're waiting because you're scared and you don't know what to do. Well, when you do choose to buy, you're not getting that 4% anymore. You're probably paying 6% or 7% or 8% or whatever percent, but it sure as shit isn't going to be 4%. So what does that mean? It means you can buy a lot less house, a lot less property, a lot less um, anything. And so, why do they call real estate an inflation hedge? Because you're locking in your payment at a certain rate for the next 30 years. If you can do that today at 4% and the trends continue the way I expect they will, at least local to South Florida, when you wanna buy a home a year from now and it's more expensive and your rate is now 7%, well, Everything else is more expensive too. So, you know, you're hurting yourself financially. And I would say pause, think, and really make a decision based on the economic reality of what we're seeing right now. Given supply and demand, given the values that, and, and I'm, I'm using low numbers as far as the, the appreciation. What if it's a lot more? What does that look like? What if the interest rates are significantly higher? Um, what does that look like? How does that impact your ability to live? Um, how does that impact 
your budget? How does that impact um, your overall well-being? Because the truth is, the inflation is going to continue continue to go higher. Interest rates are going to continue to go higher, and home values are likely, at least here in South Florida, are going to continue to go higher. So, are you better off waiting, or are you better off buying now while you can, and while you know what the metrics are? That's not a decision for me to make. It's a decision for you to make. All right. So, I am going to. I'm going to start this. So listen, if you like this content, great. I hope you do. Um, check out the video up here, which will show another uh, long format um, driving tour, which will immerse you in what it's like to live in South Florida. And if you want to know about the latest conditions as it relates to Florida real estate, then check this video out over here. And if there's ever anything I can do to help, you know where to find me. Until next time, peace.